Hey guys, welcome back to the channel or welcome if you are new. So in today's video, we're going to be looking at uh, using acrylic. So we're stepping away from the gel polish for the next sort of few videos. And we're going to have a play with some colored acrylic. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do uh, flowers. So it's the same style of flower, but I'm going to show you how to do it as a flat flower um, and also as a 3D flower as well. So the flat one, you can sort of encapsulate in acrylic and use it as part of the shape of the nail. And then obviously your 3D one sort of stands out more. So it's used more as a decoration on top of the nail. But I will take you through each step uh, and I will also show you the tips and tricks that I have picked up over the, the years uh, in terms of how to make it work and how to create a beautiful flower. So let's get on with the video. to start off you're going to need some colored acrylic so i have actually made my own uh, out of pigment powder and clear acrylic acrylic so these are my two uh, pigment powders i use so this one is from nail swag industries i've mentioned them in a few videos uh, and this one is just from an ebay uh, purchase i did so this is your mica um, pigment powder and all I did is I sort of put a little bit uh, in with some clear acrylic so in this case I used the Nail Nails uh, crystal clear acrylic powder so all I did was I scooped some of this into the little containers and then added a very small amount of pigment powder and gave it a really really good shake so you need to make sure that you shake it and stir it really well or else you're going to get a breakup of, uh, sorry, a separation of the pigment powder and the uh, acrylic powder. So these are the two colors that I'm going to use. Uh, and then the second color for each of them, because uh, it, it's really good when you create 3D flowers to use two different colors. Uh, so the second color I'm going to use is just going to be white acrylic powder. Uh, but I'll also explain that as we use each of these colors. For our first design, we're going to be doing the flat uh, flower. So for this, you're going to need your tip or your client's finger, if that's what you're doing it on. You're also going to need the colored acrylic that you're going to be using. So I'm going to use the purple for this design. And you're also going to need a second color. So in this case, I'm using uh, white acrylic powder. So for this, I'm using my Ugly Ducklings acrylic powder um, and in the white. You're going to need a monomer dish. So again, this is an Ugly Ducklings one. It's so beautiful. You're going to need some monomer. So this is their premium acrylic liquid. And you're gonna need a brush as well. So I have two uh, 3D acrylic brushes. So this one is a Brill Bird one that I sometimes use if I have a sort of quick design. I also have this one, which is the Kirsty Meekin one. Uh, oh, swap it around. This is a two-headed brush. I think I mentioned it in my last video. So this is my 3D brush. Then on the other side, I have my normal acrylic brush that I use when I create nails as well. So in this case, we're just going to be using our 3D brush. So I'm going to use this brush rather than uh, the Brill Bird one. And then you're also going to need a um, something to wipe your brush on. So these are dental bibs that you can order online. Uh, so I've just taken one and just cut it in half because we're not going to be making a huge mess. We don't need a full size one. So to start off, I'm going to show you how to pick up the bead that you're going to use uh, to create all of the petals on this flower. 
So it's really good, first of all, to make sure that your monomer is clean. Uh, it will get dirty um, if you don't clean your brush, but try to keep it as clean as possible by making sure that you are wiping your brush and cleaning your brush throughout the whole process. So what you want to do is you want to grab your 3D brush and we want to dip it into our monomer and just dragging it off slightly. You don't want to drag it all the way because then you're not going to be able to have enough liquid to go into two powders as well. So we have, we just want to dip it in. Just want to dip it in, make sure we get all the air bubbles out and we are just scraping it off a little bit. Then you're going to go into the purple or whatever color you're using. As you can see, then we're going to go straight into your white. As you can see there, I've got a come on, white and purple bead there. So let's place that down. So this one's a bit dry because I was showing you guys, but you can see the purple and the white through there. Zoom in a bit. So there you go. So you can see there is my bead that I just picked up. So there you can see it's hardened at the moment, but there you can see it's got some white there at the end there, and then purple. To start this design, I'm actually going to file down the tip. So if you put acrylic on um, a tip or on your client and it's really shiny, uh, the acrylic doesn't have anything to hold on to, so it's not going to stick very well. So what I like to do is just grab a file um, this is an old one. I'm just going to rough up the surface where I'm going to place my flower. Another trick to use, another trick that you can do is putting matte top coat over the top. Uh, and that's porous enough that it's going to grab onto the acrylic. Um, and it will actually help the acrylic to stick on the nail as well. So there is our tip and it's all roughed up in the area that I'm going to put the flower. So to start this flower, I'm using the same technique to pick up my bead uh, that I showed you. So we're going to go into our monomer. But this time I'm going to reverse the color. So I'm actually going to go into white first. And then into purple. So pick up a bit of white and into the purple and placing it down. So you want to make sure that your bead is not too wet. So as you can see, it holds quite a good shape. Then what you want to do is actually push it and pull it into a crescent shape. So this is going to help build a large petal and to help keep it flat against the tip as well. So once you've got your crescent shape, we're going to then start flattening it. So you want to just pat and pull it so that it is nice and stretched out. Be 
because we want it very flat and trying to keep that crescent shape. Now remember with acrylic you only have a certain amount of time to play with the bead. Then I'm going to go in, I'm going to create a second one in this area here, slightly overlapping uh, onto this petal just to sort of give it a bit of a um, you don't have to do that part because that's where it'll become a bit more raised. Um, so if you're encapsulating it, I probably wouldn't allow it to overlap. I just keep it flat. So using the same technique, picking up some white, then in the purple, and placing it down in the area that we're going to create our petal. Letting it set up, cleaning our brush. Then shaping it into that crescent shape again. So like I said, I'm going to overlap it slightly onto the previous petal. And going in and flattening it out. Oh, it has gone rogue. Like so. If you find that your brush is getting sticky, just clean it off in your monomer. And there's our second petal. And doing the same thing with the third. Take a train ride just to see you can see it's hardly raised off the tip of the nail so now we're going to go in with our next layer so this layer is going to be in from the previous ones and also off center from each of the petals you don't want the petal in the same position as the previous ones you want it off center and you want to make sure that these ones connect in the middle of the flower because it's going to make e make it easier when we create the center so using the same technique just with smaller beads going to my white and then into the purple placing my bead down And cleaning off my brush. Same thing, forming a crescent with the bead. And 
and flattening it out. Like so. Then I'm going to go ahead and do the next two. wanted to stand up a little bit you can do another layer um, that will raise it so as you can see at the moment it's very flat but doing another layer will actually end up raising it slightly so that's up to you so it might be if you're doing it on top of a nail as nail art on a client and they don't mind something slightly raised, then you can go for another layer, but I'm gonna go straight in and do the center. So for this part, picking up a bead, going into white, then into the purple, placing it in the center. What you want to do is then take your the very tip of your brush and you want to put it right in the middle of that bead and create a hole like so. Then what you want to do is work it out. And flatten it down. Before it sets up, you sort of want to create the middle swirl. So, all I did was sort of break the circle by pushing my brush in to the side and creating that swirl. And just flattening it down. just to sort of keep with the neighbors putting the bin out. Just to keep with that center part. like so. 
So you can also do that part with all purple if you want, just to sort of make it stand out. Or you can even do it with yellow as well. Make it um, stand out even more. You can do anything you want there. There you go. There is our flat flower. So, let's do a side on. So as you can see, it doesn't stick out very much. You could easily encapsulate that if you want to. Or you can do it on a client's nails if they struggle with any uh, raised embellishments. This is a really good way to sort of give them a nice beautiful flower uh, without them knocking or breaking any part of it as well. For our second design, you're going to need some form um, paper. So uh, if you don't know what forms are, so this is a form. So uh, you take it off and you actually use it, you put it on a, your client's finger and use it to create the nail. And what you want is, you want this part, it's really shiny. So as you can see, it's really shiny and it's not going to absorb the monomer or the acrylic. So it's going to be really easy to pick up anything that you put on it. So I've just taken some excess that I have. So... We're going to use that. Now, I've prepared my tip, filed it down like I did previously in the first one. All right. For the 3D flower, you actually work from the middle out. So to start off with, we need to create the middle sort of swirl bit. Um, don't know if that's a technical term, but <laughs> I'll call it that. So for this design, I'm going to be using the red that we created so I'm using the exact same uh, pickup technique when it comes to the beads you know putting my brush in the monomer and picking up some of the red only this time instead of putting it on the tip we're going to put it on our paper Let me zoom in so there's our bead that we just picked up and again, you've got to leave it to sort of settle and do its thing. Once it has, we're going to shape it into a rectangle. And I will show you why. So let's flatten it out. Then pinch in the sides. And you're just going to keep doing this until... You get the size that you want, but also when it has slightly set. Now, with your 3D flowers, we are actually going to be picking up the um, petals or whatever that we've created. So you cannot wait for it to set completely. But you also cannot pick it up too soon because it's then going to uh, fall apart. So what you want to do is actually wait until it is no longer shiny. So as you can see here, it's really, really shiny. So there's still quite a lot of liquid in that. So it hasn't set up in... Sorry, it hasn't cured yet for us to pick it up so as you can see it is losing its shininess so it's becoming a lot more matte colored so this is when you can then start picking it up and manipulating it into a shape which is exactly what we're going to do so first of all you need to put your brush in your monomer and give it a good clean then you want to take your brush you want to use the very tip and sort of sweep it underneath your design that you've created, whatever it is, your petal. So as you can see, it's coming off the page. Now, we are creating the swirl. So what you want to do is you want to lift up one corner and fold it over. 
like so. Then do the same, same side, pick it up, fold it, oh, fold it over. Doing it all the way to the very end. So that you create, don't know if you can see that. So you've created a swirl, which we're then going to put on our tip. So taking your tip and placing it ah, on. All right, so I have actually created this to be too tall. What you want to do is you want to grab, this is my cuticle tipper. It's got the little blade at the end. We're just going to cut it in half. Because I don't want my flower to be that tall. This is proving more difficult than I thought. All right, like so. Now, so that's fine. We made a mistake and we have fixed it. So we don't need that part. So this is the part that we're going to use. Now, as you can see, it has cured. So it's not going to stick. It's not gonna to stick to the nail by itself. And that's fine. All you have to do Let's just put it back down. All you need to do is grab your tip and grab the very, very smallest bead. As you can see up there, it's a tiny, tiny bead. We're going to place it down like so. Then we're going to pick up, so it's just sticking because of the monomer in my brush. And we're going to place that on top. Oh gosh, it's not working for me. And we're going to place it on top like so. So as you can see, it's quite raised up. Which is good because we're going to build the flower around it. Give it a chance to set itself up. And there's the middle of our flower. Now we're going to start uh, by, uh, start creating our petals. Now remember with the last one, uh, we were bigger on the outside and smaller as we came into the middle. Now because with your 3D flowers, you're starting from the middle and moving out, we're going to start off by creating small petals. Now we're going to be using the exact same technique with the flat, except we're going to be creating it onto our paper that we've got here. So we're going to go... Put our brush in our monomer, picking up a very small bead of red and into our white. So it's really, really small bead, placing it on our paper. Letting it set itself up, and then we're going to go and create our petal using the exact same technique I did with the previous design. So with the flat design, pinching in the, uh, the front, flattening out the back. So for this, you may want to... Um, change the way you hold your brush so that it's flatter it's up to you and we are just creating our petal like so so there is our first petal now the exact same thing that we did with the middle we're waiting for it to become matte before we pick it up so it's starting to become a bit matte so I'm going to clean my brush 
making sure I don't have it full with monomer. I'm gonna go in and you wanna come in from the top over here. So this is the part that's going to attach to the center of the flower that we just created. So you wanna come in from the top, sweeping motions underneath it until you pick it up. Just be careful. Be very, very gentle with it. And you pick it up. Grab your tip that has the center. And what you want to do is you want to put this end of the petal right up against the center. Like so. And there's enough monomer on there that it will stick on its own. And what you want to do is you want to grab your brush and just gently push it in at the base of the flower just to make sure that it has stuck nicely to each other. There is our first petal. Now let's create another one. So we're going to do three petals in total and then we'll go into a bigger size as well. So let's then create our next petal. The exact same technique. Put my brush in monomer into the red, creating a small bead and placing it down. Wiping my brush off. And just starting to create the shape that we want for the petal. Pinching in the front and spreading out the back. It takes a lot of patience to create this type of thing. And once you become uh, more practiced at it, You'll be able to do this a lot quicker. So I'm happy with that shape. Just leave it for a few seconds to sort of set up a bit. So it's starting to become matte. So I'm going to clean my brush, making sure there's no excess monomer. So really wiping it on the side of your, uh, your dish. I'm going to come in again from the top of the petal and sweep. So at the moment, so you can see I'm just going around it, trying to find a part to give. You see I'm now getting under it. Just want to do back and forth, sweeping motions, moving forward until you've picked up the whole thing. Like so. And again, grabbing our tip and placing our petal on. Slightly overlapping the previous petal. And coming into the bottom really pushing it onto that center that we created making sure that it's stuck you might need to put your brush into the monomer and wet it a little bit so wet the center just to sort of get it to stick a little bit this one i think is cured too fast it's all right just push it in. It's all right, we're gonna have petals around it that will help to keep it stuck. So keep in mind, if you find that it has cured and it's not sticking properly, you can always redo the petal, but we are gonna be putting petals around it uh, that will help to keep it up against the middle. So what's happened with this is that I was a bit slow trying to get it off the paper. So it has cured uh, a lot more, which means that it's not sticking. So as you can see here, it's not sticking as well, but that's all right. 
If this was one of the back pedals, then I would do it again because it would need to adhere properly. All right, now we're going to create a third pedal uh, to go over this side here using the exact same technique. So this pedal is actually bigger than I wanted that third pedal to be, but that's fine. What we might do is actually put this as the next level. So don't throw it away. You might be able to use it for your next level. So uh, because they need to get bigger as they come out. So we'll use it for our next level over here between these two first pedals. So it's now ready to get picked up. So sweeping underneath just to try and get it to come off the page. It's losing its shape a bit. That's all right. So like so. Then we're going to come along and place it underneath these two petals here. Just making sure that it sort of wraps around the two previous petals. Now, as you come out, you want to sort of flatten them out a bit so that they're not sticking straight up. Like so. So that's fine. We've just created the first petal for the second layer. But that's fine. That was an accident. So let's go back to our third petal for the first layer. See if we can get a small bead. I think that's all right now. Yeah, that's perfect. Again, using our pat and pull method, creating that pedal. I think that will do. There you go. So it's okay if every petal is a different shape. If you have a look at a flower, every petal is not uniform. It's all very different shapes. So it will then, so it's still a bit shiny. So we'll just give it a few more seconds. You can see it's starting to go matte over there. So right, let's I was too early. So back and forth sweeping motions and moving forward and picking it up. All right. So now, let's place it on the flower. And again, hugging it around the petals, like so. So I hope this 
hasn't this one here hasn't complicated uh, sorry confused anyone but so we have our first three petals over here around our center then what we've done is we've then started on the next layer around the pet around the petals by creating a bigger petal to then start the next one so I'm going to then create the next one, which is then going to go sort of from this middle of this petal around hugging into this one here. So we're going to need a bigger bead for that. Wiping my brush. And starting to pat and pull. Constantly wiping your brush as you work on the acrylic. Making sure that your brush is nice and clean throughout the whole thing. There's our next petal. So again, waiting for it to set up a bit. Giving it a few seconds. While we're waiting for that, I have just put my brush in monomer, just wiping up the excess, ready to pick it up. So going in, sweeping motions. You don't want to do big sweeping motions, just little ones to get underneath there. And working towards the center. And picking it up. Grabbing our tip. And placing it down. Oh, this one's quite big. Then we're going to create our last petal on. Oh, we're going to create our last petal to go around here. Just pat this down just so that it's a bit flatter. <laughs> that we created with acrylic very similar techniques but um, this one obviously you're using that extra paper and creating a 3d effect 
But once you become more confident with creating 3D flowers, you could even do something like this using a different type of sensor. So this is a uh, fidget jewel, I think it's called. So it's got a little thing at the back that spins. So when you apply it to the nail, it actually can spin on the nail. But all I did was the same technique as this one, where I used this as the center and I applied the petals around and built up from the center out. But keeping in mind that I couldn't have anything touching this part here or else it would stop it from spinning. So all I did was use the same technique to do that. But that's our video, a nice and short one uh, for this week. Uh, if you have any questions or if you need me to explain anything further, hit me up in the comment section below. Um, otherwise, you can also message me over on socials, on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, the link for those are also down below in the description box. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.